morning we're going to uh, be talking about Matthew chapter 4. Um, and I might even reach back into some things in, in chapter 3 because whenever you go to speak on something, we, you know, got to look back to the, the last thing that was said so that we know what the sequence is. Um, that's why many times a chapter will start out therefore or, or wherefore or some type of for, uh, which means you got to go back and go, therefore what? What for? And when you say that, then you go back and go, oh, okay, that's what led into this conversation. Because there wasn't chapters and verses. That's just something that man has put together to divide things out so we can find where we can digest and we know where it's at, right? And so in Matthew chapter 3, um, this is where Jesus got baptized. And um, John had prophesied about him, about his winnowing fan in verse 12. His shovel, his fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear out and clean his threshing floor and gather and store his wheat in the barn, but the chaff he will burn up with fire and cannot be put out. So when we look at that, that's a huge thing describing what Jesus is about to be instituted into. Like he's, this is, this is going to be the call. This is, this is how he's going to unleash on the earth. He's going to institute his winnowing fan. And um, so the winnowing fan has been here this whole time, the shovel, the fork in his hand. And, you know, that's like when you're, I don't know, when you got the wheat and you throw it in the air, it's going to separate. That's, in fact, how they used to do it. And that's a long process to get the, the good stuff to, to uh, go into the barn and the, the old chaff to be burned up. And so here he just came through, uh, you know, prophesying. And then he turns around, Jesus shows up, and he baptized him. So he prophesied how he's going to roll, right, in verse 12. Then he baptizes him in verse 16. And that's when the father said, and behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my son, my beloved in whom I delight, or in whom I am well pleased, is how some translations say it. Um, and I don't think he was saying ju just because he checked off the list water baptism, right? No, he had gone through uh, a process to get to a point. You know, he had been trained. There was uh, trainings that had gone on. He had to be under people's authority like his father, who was a carpenter. I mean, all of these different things took place in his life. And then he began to um, deal with, you know, the Sadducees and the Pharisees already were hot after wondering about him and then he gets placed into ministry right after he gets water baptized so it's not water baptized baptism that put him in the ministry but it was like okay now you're ready it was that culmination it was that last thing of like do it right and um, yet the prophecy was that he's here with his winnowing fork and this is how he's going to separate things out. He is, his winnowing fork, his fan, his shovel, his fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear out and clean his threshing floor. Um, I just believe that we're going to see that even more now than they did back then. Because it's, it's the end of days. It's the culmination. In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. And so by doing that, you're going to see his character, and his character, his character is going to come out of the threshing floor. Now, real interestingly, uh, we had a uh, teacher come through that laid the tabernacle over top the map of America. And where we fall is in the threshing floor. Where we fall is where things get repented. We're in that area of repentance where you look at in the mirror and you check out, oh, here's where I'm at. Isn't that interesting? That's Minnesota. And um, so prophetically, let's, let's take a look at that in the fact that if, if that's where we are, you know, a lot of people want to book from the state now because they're like, well, we got to go. Let's go to South Dakota. Let's go somewhere where, you know, the rules aren't the same and, and things like that. Now what's happened with the government, yet we are called, if you were called to the state, if you know you're supposed to be here, and that's just a fleshly desire to move, if you know you're supposed to be here, is a different thing, then you're going to be a part of the start of revival 
and this will be a big aspect of what will be a part of it, will be that threshing floor. Now, is the threshing floor ministry, if you want to call it that, or the, the separating out everywhere? Yeah, because that's what the gospel does. The word of God goes in and divides, right? It's just I found it interesting that, that there is a high purpose here, that there is a need for repentance in the state of Minnesota. So we know that that's what we got to do. We got to take a closer look. We gotta, we're going to start something by looking at ourselves, right? We're going to start something. So, um, so, but if you look at how this went, he walked out many different things through his life. He grew in stature. He grew in knowledge, right? And, and, uh, and yet here he comes. He gets prophesied about that this is how he's going to operate. Then he gets water baptized. And that's when God is saying, okay, we're at that point. My beloved son, I'm well pleased. It wasn't that he was doing the checklist of like, well, you did everything I said. It's like, it's more of like, here's the culmination. Now you're ready. And so the unleashing then takes place. And in chapter four, then Jesus was led or guided by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, the desert to be tempted, tested and tried. The Holy Spirit led him. The Holy Spirit led him to be tested and tried. Part of us getting tested and tried, though, is the prophecy uh, or the thing God has spoke over us, what we're supposed to be doing as we go, yes, Lord, and we take on his baptism. We go, yeah, I want to minister like that. This is, what I, this is why we're here. Uh, the Holy Spirit's going to lead you into a time of testing. Because anytime you say, this is what I'm, I'm going to do, or yes, Lord, you have my all, um, you go through a filter. So for, because there's parts of you who doesn't believe that. And, and you want to be a pure vessel, or it'll get you in trouble when you go to uh, minister in an area or whatever. The devil will have footholds that he can grab a hold of. And so it's the grace of God that would put you through a testing. It would be the grace of God to say, let's just run you through the filter and strain out anything that needs to go. Now, I'm not saying he'll cause cancer. He'll do these different things. Well, now there's your testing, right? No, he's not borrowing from the devil's kingdom. This world is a test anyway. All I have to do is say, hey, let's go street witnessing tomorrow. There's going to be a test. Before tomorrow, there's going to be a test. And uh, that's, just, that's just the way it is. Uh, you pay attention. There'll be a test within yourself as to whether or not you want to talk yourself out of it. You know, should we really be going this long? I mean, uh, you know, maybe we could do it next week. I mean, stuff will come up. There'll be a test. And part of our assignment is to fulfill that assignment by handing it in. Right? And then after you hand the assignments in, there's usually a, a test. That's how it works. So... So he was led or guided by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness or the desert to be tempted, tested, and tried by the devil. And he went without food for 40 days and 40 nights, and later he was hungry. And the tempter came. That was the job of the demonic realm or the devil. He came and said to him, if you are God's son, command these stones to be made loaves of bread. So that one really is talking about, you know, your, your needs being met. So this is kind of hard now if, you, if you're if you going to pass this test and really want to do, you hand some assignments in, and we were pleased with that, but now you got to do the test, right? So the devil himself is testing him. Well, that would be fitting at that point to have the father of lies test him because Jesus has to walk through this because he has to be a pure vessel to lay his life down, right? Big call. And so the big guy shows up, right? The devil himself shows up. Um, and so he, he's going to test him, and it'll be about your needs. Well, now look, you had to go without this. And, and are you sure you're supposed to be doing this? You sure? How are your finances going to support what God's asked you to do? This is going to make it harder. I mean, we're supposed to sell the car. I mean, I need that car. I mean, whatever it is that he's asking you to do is like a loaf of bread when you're guided into that testing point. Right. But he replied, it's been written, man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone, but every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. So he's saying, I don't care about the thing that we need. I'm going to be sustained either way. That should be our confession when we're going through any form of test. It's like God's got me. 
It's going to, I don't know how all this is going to be taken care of, but I'll live. We're going to come through this. I know how to abound, the other parts of Scripture say, and I know how to be abased, and I'm just waiting. I'll be all right. All right? So man shall not live and be upheld and sustained. Man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by money alone, by, by things alone, by food alone, by whatever it is that you need. We're sustained and upheld by God. Then the devil took him into the holy city and placed him on a, a, a turret or a pinnacle or a gable of the temple or the sanctuary. Because that's how the devil rolls. He likes to go to high places. I think it's kind of funny in some ways. You know, uh, sometimes it's like, it's, it's some, almost like small devil syndrome. He's got to go higher up, you know. <laughs> You know, so we've got to go higher up so that we can feel bigger. Like, look at all this land or whatever it is. Why not just talk face to face right here? No, we gotta, we got to present. we got to go big. And, um, and so there will be things that will present itself before you, and it will tempt you in that way. And he put him up on top of a temple or sanctuary, and he said to him, if you are the son of God, so if you're really called to this ministry, if you are really supposed to start this business, if you really, whatever it is, throw yourself down for it is written, he will give his angels charge over you and they will bear you up on their hands, let you strike your foot against the stone. So he even used the scripture against him. As he was up there in that high place feeling all shoddy and hot. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is also written, so on the other hand, I know that that scripture is there. You shall not tempt or test thoroughly or try exceedingly the Lord your God. So we don't take scripture and try to force God to do something. Right? But I will tell you what, there's been times in, in a lot of our lives we've done that. I mean, think about it. It's like, well, he has to do this. This is what people will say. I've had him say it to me. Like, well, doesn't he have to heal that person? Doesn't he? Well, he don't have to do anything. He wants to, and it's his will to, but it's an attitude within us once we go, well, he has to. Well, now you're operating with him in a different way. So I should just be able to. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to do whatever, and he has to take care of that. Well, go ahead. Rent the building he never told you to rent. See if you can make those payments. See how that rolls in the end. See, but we'll do that when we're going through different things. Um, and so we don't tempt or test thoroughly or try exceedingly the Lord your God. Uh, and it's that same attitude that many times when we feel angry, we'll push back at him. Again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory, the splendor, the magnificence, the preeminence and excellence of them. That's that tempting of like, there's a better thing. When you go through that filter, there'll always be a better thing. Because when it's hard, everything's a better thing. <laughs> Tell that to the missionary who hasn't ate for two days and he's trying to break into, you know, an area and, and bust through a spiritual spot to get into a certain tribe that doesn't, he doesn't even speak the language. There's going to be some beautiful, excellent things at that point that are going to look like, I don't know if I should be here. I don't know if I, this is where I'm supposed to be. Because I could be sitting where right now? It was kind of like the children of Israel saying, oh, I want to go back to Egypt. Like, what? You were a slave for that long, and you want to go back, you know. But we will. Our flesh will just speak really loud. Um, you know, if you want to know how your, your flesh talks, just go without sugar. If you don't know the voice of your flesh, just say, this week we're not having sugar. And you'll be like, yeah, I can do that. About three hours later, like, ah, you know, depending on how much you like sugar, that's just an example of your, you'll get to know the voice of your flesh. You'll be like, oh, man, you are loud and obnoxious. But, 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 and it will present. It'll say, let me take you to the high place. I want to show you the splendor of things you could be involved in right now. No, but I felt the Lord told me to go without sugar this week. Yeah, the voice will speak loudly. And, and so these are all filters that test and try us because otherwise we're all talk, right? 
They're like, yes, I'm going to help support this ministry. Or yes, I'm going to go into the schools. Or yes, I'm going to do whatever it is. Okay, now you're going to go run through a filter. Hmm? And it's good business. God's a good businessman. It's good business. I mean, you shouldn't just hire somebody because they got all this stuff written behind their name and all this. What are you, oh, I guess we're going to put them in that spot. No, know who works among you. And even though they might be really gifted, they still got to go through a filter. There should be a filter that we go through. This is an example of it. Right? To see if your flesh hangs out all over. The gift might be great, but your flesh might be hanging out all over when you go to use it. And so this is how, you know, we, we pass these tests. Now, he had this in this, you know, period of time. Uh, we have this many times for years. We're going through these tests. And right when we get past one, it's like, oh, and we're, we're in another. Sometimes it's a certain area. Like, we just, it doesn't bother us at all to, you know, go without bread for a few days. It doesn't bother us at all. But it does bother us if the comforts and the beauty and the world, we can't participate in that. That might be the area that will really bother you. And so we know our weaknesses and we know our strengths. And this is where the Lord says also, it's a principle to count the cost before you go to war. What count? What is the cost we're counting? You can't even take a proper count if you don't self-assess. What are your weaknesses and your strengths? Because he's not going to come after your strengths. He's going to come after your weaknesses. And at least knowing, yeah, I tend to, ugh, this is going to be that area. I'm going to have to shore this up as a term that many times we will use. Shore up that weakness. I mean, get it built up where it becomes strong. Practice and exercise in that certain area, whatever it is, um, in the strength of God. But if you're not sure what it is, then we say, count the cost before we go to war. Okay, let's, let's go to war. Um, if you didn't self-assess, you won't really know what the cost is going to be to you. Yeah? So, again, the devil took him up on the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms. And so he had the splendor, the magnificence, the preeminence, and the excellence of them. And he said to them, these things all Taken together, I will give you if you will prostrate yourself before me and do homage and worship me. So it didn't say if you'd raise your hands before me, right? You know why? You know why it said it that way? I want you at the lowest point, right? Whole body lay down before me, and you can have all that. Mm. Yeah. So. When we go through hard times, that's the ah, that's that thing. It would be so easy to just lay down. It would just be so, all I have to do is, it's right there. And these things, it would relieve the pain that's in my life for about two minutes. And then you'd be worse off than when you started. And that's when, that, that was like the, the poking that went deeper in. It's like... Excuse me, I ain't laying prostrate before you. And he says, be gone, Satan. Get out of here. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. So in that way, he passed the test. He passed the test. Then the devil departed because he thought, well, you know, just like the scripture says, you know, Jesus um, doesn't just put trust in man because he knows what's in them, Right? So he doesn't give us just all the precious things. They're available to us, but you don't get to have them right away. You get, there's some tests you go through because these are precious things. These are kingdom things. And kingdom things can kill you when given to you when you can't handle it. Certain aspects of the anointing, certain amounts of the anointing can kill you if you're in a spot where you haven't been filtered. You ever think of that? It's like, I want more anointing. It's like, right, let me run through a filter one more time. There's a, there's a fear of the Lord that goes, you know, you know, and it wouldn't be cool if we could. And we're looking at these things and they become, you know, they become almost like 
that idol almost like, oh, that'd be so cool. And a big part of it is the orphan's heart will say, if I could operate like that, see, then I would feel complete. Then I would feel loved. Then I would know God cared about me. Then I would know all these different things that were lacking. That's an orphan's heart. The son might ask God for the keys to the car, right? But be able to handle, no, not right now, son. Okay, okay, I'll wait, right? And later on, um, then when he gets the keys to the car, there should be such an appreciation, such thankfulness coming out. But you get something real easy, there it is, and then we don't see the value in it, says America, right? <laughs> Said America, this is why we don't see the value and what was bought for us and the freedom that we have. We're, just, we're still, as, as a country, we're, we're blind in some areas, still not seeing it. And how we know is there would be a greater uprising if we really got the view of what we're about to lose. We got handed stuff from somebody who laid their life down, then we got handed things, and so then somebody else handed somebody else something, and all of a sudden there's no history of where this came from, and there was nothing came out of me to produce that. So, then the attitude becomes wrong. And so in a sense right now, America's being tested. America is being tested. We're in part of it, so we're, he's guiding the church into the wilderness for the testing, let's run you through the filter before this revival. Because we're not ready for revival. There's little pockets of revival happening. And even the revivals that, you know, maybe there's 200 people and they're having great services or whatever. And we go, that's revival. No, that's not what he's talking about for last day's revival. There will be a direct separation out. There will be those hungering after God and those who will hate him. That's the last day's revival. That's the last day's revival. So if we go, yeah, we want to be a part of it. We want to be the remnant. We want to, be, well, guess what? Just by saying that, just by craving that, you're going to run through a filter because this is the most precious thing to the Lord is the souls of the people that are on this planet. So that's why he sent Jesus. So the biggest filter is happening right now. He's shaking the entire church. Right? So he was guided by the Holy Spirit into a wilderness or a desert is how um, that translates. To be tempted, tested, and tried. So those are different operations, and I don't know that I have the time to get into them. But he was guided, then he was tempted, tested, and tried. We probably should look into that. Maybe next week I'll do that. But there is there's something right now. So we're tempted to do certain things right now. Uh, they're going to be right there. How to get out of it. How to not want to be in the center of what's going on. Let's just move out of the state. Let's just pray the rapture comes. Let's just, we got to get out of this. Right? And uh, that's part of us knowing, ah, I'm about to enter the threshing floor. And you can feel it. Your flesh feels it. So America's flesh is feeling the threshing floor. And it's the very anointing that Jesus passed the test to do. And then he turned around when he left. And he gave the keys to the kingdom to his body of believers, right? His disciples, his disciplined ones, the one who learned about what he was called to do and said, now you go do what I did. You go do what I'm doing. This is where, if you were here for Faith and Freedom, uh, when one of the, the sermons that happened or one of the speakers talked about how America got itself into the spot, and it really is the church's fault. And I'm like, yes and amen. Yes and amen. Because if we were alive, alert, and awake, this would not have happened. Right? So at, at the same time, then now to get in a position where we now as leaders... And as ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ, to come up into a spot where we're going to be able to speak into anything and be a part of that threshing floor, I don't thresh anybody. We just bring the anointing. You just bring the anointing. 
it'll thresh your family. You start praying and the anointing shows up, your whole family will get threshed. It's like, ah. Oh. Yeah, and, and you'll know it because the feeling is, ah, you know, you get thrown in the air. Ah, ah, right? And, it, and there's a crushing that takes place. And that's what's happening in America, but it's going to happen in the house of the Lord first. It's going to happen as individuals first, right? So that means it's going to affect our families. Tempted, tested, and tried. So a pastor's preaching on is suffering. And wouldn't that kind of be the umbrella word over the tempted, tested, and tried? When you're tried by fire, they're suffering. It's, there's just something about that. So, so um, here then he uh, kicks the devil out and immediately starts ministering. I just love it. I just love it. I love it. I love it. But he ministers by going and finding disciples and sealing that. I need you to come with me. I'm going to make you a fisherman. It says that in verse 18 and 19 of Matthew chapter 4. 19 says, come after me as disciples, letting me be your guide. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So he was launched into ministry like that. Anything you want to do for God has to be launched. It has to be assigned, and then it has to be launched, which means in that launching, you're going to be tempted, tested, and tried. And the faster we get out of the wilderness... Because we can let that thing hang for years. Like, no, I'm still working on this part. No, I'm still, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not sure about this. You can hang there as long as you want. Like, Jesus did not play. He went through the, the thing. He went through the need. He went through being harassed. There were wild animals. There were all kinds of things going on. He had to go through the psyche part of it, the mind games, all of that stuff. He had to. So that he could show us how to do the same thing. So it isn't that if you're anointed, you'll just never go through that. If you're anointed, you'll go through that all the more because you're carrying the holiness of God. You're carrying the power of God. You're in the deepest part of the tabernacle. People died in there by being in the presence of God and not being ready to be there. So here we are in this hour where they're at the winnowing fork, we're being thrown. And so, but what will happen is when you're being thrown, you're like, I don't know why this is happening to me. Ah! <laughs> you know, um, the higher you go, the harder you land, right? Um, I don't know why it, that'll be the first thing. It's like, why is this happening to me? Why is God doing this to me? Why, 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 why doesn't he help? Why doesn't he stop it? Why, why? Oh, I love that Jesus gave us the example. It never quotes him of ever saying why on anything. Think about that. You know, how come? And, and I don't get it. And why does Joe get out of it? And who's the, you know, all the things that we do, that immature part of us, you know, all that uh, blame game kind of stuff. Why, 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 why? He never said any of that. He just spoke the word. He suffered in the flesh part. And he spoke the word out of who he was. Suffering well. Right? That's, that's how you suffer well. You can suffer whiny. Right? Uh, I mean, I, I've, we had 12 kids for a long time and, and uh, probably had like 30 kids come through our home doing foster care or whatever. So you got to do all the doctor visits and there were shots involved and, and things like that. And we had one girl that just was just a little needle, but she didn't like shots. And I mean, the dance, it was a dance. They were like, okay, get ready for it. And she'd be like, ah. and she would, she had this whole thing that she would do and then back up. No, okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and the nurse will be like, okay, but we're, you're going to need to do this. And, and so um, through all of that, I, I said, honey, we, we can do this for another hour. We can. They'll be patient. They'll just send a new nurse in. Right? But that same one's going to require this. So with that, she, she went through a breathing process. I prayed with her or whatever. And I, and I said, 
we can do the dance for hours or we can take 30 seconds. Can you do 30 seconds? And when I put it in her mind that way, she was like, 30 seconds, let's count that out. We counted out and she's like, I can do that. Right? Do the moment. Suffer well in the moment and you can get to move on to the next stage. Suffer well in the moment. Right? And use the word. And that's what we did. And, and she was like, oh, oh, I didn't, that didn't even hurt. <laughs> but the dance that went on, the whole thing that, you know, and, and that's what we do many times. Like, it's coming. I don't, I don't want to be thrown in the air. I don't, how to, ah. you know, better to just put your seatbelt on and go, all right, here we go, you know. And, and you ah, and know that you're going through the process. Then you go through that process in the flesh in different areas throughout your life. It isn't that pastor and I are like, yeah, we don't get thrown in the air anymore. Uh, <laughs> everything that's new that we have to do, we're like, here we go. Kind of look at each other like, <laughs> here we go. But it's going to be good in the end. And what's crazy is you can look back. It's not like he's after killing your, your spirit. Just your flesh. So there's something about it that actually becomes shorter each time because you learn how to suffer well it's like mm, yeah I'm, I'll do this I'll do this because avoidance takes up a lot of time space and energy in your brain avoidance does let's stand I know for a fact that we're all going through some type of being thrown in the air right now and and how I know that if you're if you're wanting anything to do with the last days or living godly or or bringing the blessing to your neighborhood if you just want to do anything for God you're getting thrown in the air so the quicker we face that we're not opening ourselves up to the demonic realm like so they can throw us now get off the threshing floor you don't even belong here get out if you stay or if you think you can sneak around in here you will be burned with chaff just so you know right because God is winnowing me and so then it's almost like let's just get this done let's just let's just do it right and he's doing it with each of us and he's doing it as individuals and for our family but he's doing it for the sake of this nation he's doing it all across the world but the call of God on this nation is to bring the gospel to the rest of the world oh that's just that can be pride Right? That's, oh, that's the call of God on America. Yeah, well, you get that big a call, you better have a big trial. <laughs> You're going to go through a big test to carry that anointing. So, Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus, even in, in how we're being winnowed right now, even in how we are, uh, you know, in the air right now. Or some of us have felt like we face planted a few days ago. And um, it just broke off the chaff off of us. And it was painful. And we know what we got to let go of. And we know what we have to reach out to. And so, Father God, show us even more. Show us even more so that in this suffering before the glory can rest on us. We will suffer well. Thank you, Lord God. Like a soldier, like a disciple, like a disciplined one, Lord. Cause us to come from a believer to a follower, right on up to a disciplined one. And we do it because you told us to, not because we felt like it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wash over us this day. And anyone watching online, if you identify with what I'm talking about, you're like, okay, that's probably what's happening to me. That's a whole different thing than that pain comes from the suffering, and all of a sudden you turn on yourself and condemn yourself and, and think that, well, every demon in hell has the right to attack me, and God doesn't love me, and he's not, he's not here for me. Those are all demonic thoughts. Those are all fear-based thoughts that are not of our Father's kingdom. Take authority over the devil. But get close to God. And when you get close to God, you'll be winnowed. It's just the way it is. As you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. And you'll be safe in it. You're going to come out of it. You are going to be blessed. And highly favored are you even now. And so, Father, we thank you. And, and we ask forgiveness 
for anything that in the process of our wilderness journey, anything that we're bucking up against or anything that we just don't want to have to face. We don't want to have to give answer to the devil or anyone else. It's annoying to us. Forgive us, Lord God, for just not having seen what this is all about. Us giving answer or speaking to the demonic realm and saying the word causes us to be changed. And then changes the atmosphere around us. Help us to count the cost before we go to war. Help us to count the cost of revival. Help us, Lord God, to see ourselves so that we're more and more ready. Not a performance thing, a relationship thing, a purifying thing, a fire thing. Hallelujah. Let's pray in the spirit for a little bit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's have the band come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, praise you, praise you. We thank you. The work that you're doing within us. For that business that has been stuck for months already. Be loose now in Jesus' name. Let the winnowing come to a completion now, 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 as they yield, as they yield, as they yield. You are readying us to carry the anointing to the greatest revival that mankind has ever seen. Create in us a new heart, O oh God. Create in us a new heart. Thank you, Lord. That uh, pride in your presence just melts right off of us. Just like water off a duck's back. It just melts right off of us. Get off of us. Get out of our flesh. Get out of our thinking. Competition. Judgmentalism. All of those types of things that get in the way. Wash us in Jesus' name. Let it flow from the head of our family through the, the youngest child to our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, praise you, Lord God. Holy are you, worthy are you. Mighty is our God. Mighty are you. Hmm. He's going to show you if you're in a test right now or if you're being tried right now. We're, we're going to have to study those, those three things because they are a little bit different. In the same process, but passing a test is different than being tried. Like you can be tried by fire. <sighs> Refining. All of those different things. In that self-assessment, it's really important that we can assess, where am I at right now? Is this a trial that I'm going through? Am I being tested? Well, then I'm going to pass the test. If I'm under trial and someone's questioning whether or not I'm right or wrong or, or, or I can go to where I need to go, then I'm going to speak the word because the word is already declared. See, so, so each thing requires something different. So give us wisdom, Lord God. Give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. And as we go into the service, even praise and worship, download to us the heavenlies. Download to us the heavenlies. And as we hear what Pastor has to say by your spirit this morning, Lord God, that we would learn even more of how to go through this and do it quickly. In the name of Jesus. Let's worship.